Approximately 60 light years from the Bajoran wormhole of the Alpha Quadrant, the planet of Ferenginar stood as the homeworld of the Ferengi species and the seat of government for the Ferengi Alliance. Developing into a powerful economic force among the various governments in the area, they were primarily motivated by a desire for profit, guided by a set of rules and regulations meant to protect their free enterprise values while preserving the unity of the Alliance as a whole. The Ferengi were humanoids with wrinkled noses, sharp teeth, and large sensitive ears, referred to as lobes, which made their hearing extremely acute. Known to live over a hundred years, they had a strong immune system with a four-lobed brain which could not be read by most telepaths. Shorter than the average human, their diet consisted primarily of insects and slugs, though only from their home world, considering the insects of other planets unappealing. It took approximately 10,000 years for the Ferengi to establish themselves as an interstellar power, with a male named Gint becoming the first Grand Nagus, the ultimate political and economic authority in their society. Having purchased warp technology to spread beyond their home system, individual Ferengi were often very independent, united only by their values and adherence to the rules and regulations set forth by government institutions such as the Ferengi Commerce Authority, led by a board of liquidators whose offices were located on the 40th floor of the Tower of Commerce in the sacred marketplace of Ferenginar, and who oversaw the enforcement of Ferengi trade bylaws and codes. There was also the Ferengi Trade Mission, responsible for overseeing business relations with other species, the Ferengi Health Commission, who had the ability to revoke trade licenses, and the Ferengi Gaming Commission, who regulated casinos and gambling. Donations and bribery were a readily accepted part of government and public life, with Ferengi expected to pay when dealing with government officials, and for government employees to pay off their superiors in order to seek favor and promotion. Even their religion centered around profit, having to pay for their prayers to be heard, and believing they could take their wealth with them after death, using the funds collected over the span of their lives to bribe the blessed exchequer and enter the divine treasury. Once inside, the celestial auctioneers present their lots so you might bid on your next life. A poor Ferengi who lacked the funds needed to pass through the divine treasury might be cast into the vault of eternal destitution, their spirit lost forever. In addition to the many institutions and regulations that guide their society, Ferengi businessmen revere nothing more than the sacred rules of acquisition written by the first Grand Nagus as 173 rules to help his species pursue profit. The rule book was later expanded to 285 by the 24th century and included such suggestions like the first rule of acquisition, once you have their money, you never give it back. Other well-known and interesting rules include number 10, greed is eternal. Number 17, a contract is a contract is a contract, but only between Ferengi. Number 34, war is good for business. Number 35, peace is good for business. Number 111, treat people in your debt like family, exploit them. And number 211, employees are the rungs on the ladder of success, don't hesitate to step on them. Although most Ferengi desired nothing more than to establish themselves financially, using profit to elevate themselves within society, there were varying degrees of relentlessness and greed among their species, with some even rejecting the pursuit of profit to follow a path of their own choosing, which sometimes meant abandoning the laws and customs of the Alliance. Through their persistent pursuit of new financial ventures throughout the Alpha Quadrant, they established relations with many other worlds and species, largely adhering to a policy of neutrality, preferring to settle their disputes through negotiation and economic pressure rather than warfare. Although many other species see the Ferengi as greedy, dishonest, and manipulative, they often see themselves as examples of a morally superior culture because their desire for non-violent, financially beneficial solutions saw them avoid many of the atrocities committed by others. The Ferengi had no history of genocide or military occupation and conquest, and had never been involved in a large-scale war. They even claimed to have never practiced slavery, although their treatment of females in society contradicts that claim. However, because Ferengi did not consider women as anything more than property, they did not consider their oppression as a moral failing. Females within the Alliance were forbidden from pursuing profit, participating in government, or even wearing clothes in public. They were expected to devote themselves entirely to service the men in their lives and to birth children for their husbands. And while women were largely dismissed by men in their society, mothers were highly valued by their sons
sons with the 31st rule of acquisition, making it clear that one must never make fun of a Ferengi's mother. Though the Ferengi alliance was not known as a military power, they did maintain a fleet of decora class marauders, which were used defensively to protect their trade missions and business ventures outside their space. And while the Ferengi were often stereotyped as cowards, with some emitting a high-pitched scream when frightened, not all could be described in this way, as demonstrated in the Battle of Prexnak in the year 2374, where 10 Ferengi stood alone against 273 Lytasians, fighting valiantly until the bitter end. Ferengi were known to have interacted with humans as early as 2151 and had another encounter in 2355 when a Ferengi vessel attacked the USS Stargazer under the command of Jean-Luc Picard, who proved victorious at the Battle of Maxia. Yet the Stargazer was so badly damaged they had to evacuate and abandon the ship. Official first contact then came in 2364, when Daemon Bach sought vengeance against Jean-Luc Picard for the death of his son, who commanded the ship destroyed at Maxia. Yet his plans were ultimately foiled and he was relieved of his command by First Officer Kazago, who deemed his personal vendetta an unprofitable venture. What few know, however, is that their species actually made first contact with humans in the year 1947, when the Ferengi Quark, Rom, and Nog were transported through time and were studied by 20th century humans in America before making their escape. These Ferengi males, who lived and worked for many years on the Federation outpost Deep Space Nine, played an important role in the future of the Ferengi Alliance and their relations with the Federation. Nog, the son of Rom, became the first Ferengi to join Starfleet, becoming an officer on Deep Space Nine and fighting as a soldier of the Federation Alliance during the devastating conflict known as the Dominion War of the late 24th century. With the discovery of the Bajoran wormhole leading from the Alpha Quadrant into the Gamma Quadrant, a great power known as the Dominion soon invaded. The Ferengi, eager to establish new trade and business relations with the species of the Gamma Quadrant, were the first to travel deep enough into the territory to learn of this great military power said to be ruled by a race of changeling gods called Founders and defended by a warrior race known as the Jem'Hadar. Unwilling to submit to the invading force, an alliance of Alpha and Beta Quadrant powers rose to oppose them, leading to wide-scale warfare and the deaths of countless millions. Yet while the Federation, Klingon Empire, Romulan Empire, Cardassian Union, Breen Confederacy, and others came to be involved in the conflict on one side or the other, the Ferengi maintained their neutrality, keeping business relations with both factions, and sometimes even served as intermediaries between them. Nevertheless, the Ferengi government was well aware that their natural business interests were tied to the established powers of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants, and so tended to favor the Federation faction. Yet while the Ferengi were able to avoid avoid becoming involved directly in the Dominion War, the Alliance faced its own internal struggle and revolution at the end of the 24th century under Grand Negus Zek, which came to fundamentally transform their society. However, the changes in the Alliance did not originate with the Grand Negus, but rather with a Ferengi female named Ishka, mother of Quark and Rom, who refused to be constrained by the archaic rules of their culture. Working in secret, she broke the law forbidding women from earning profit and built a business so large and successful, she became immensely wealthy and came to the attention of the government, leading to her arrest, confession, and the forfeiture of her profits. Yet she was undeterred by the setback and continued in her rebellious ways, eventually coming to the attention of Grand Negus Zek and beginning a romantic relationship with the old man. As they spent more time together, Ishka was able to influence the Negus tremendously, coming to rule the alliance from behind the scenes as Zek's mental health deteriorated in his later years. By 2374, her influence was so profound, she convinced the Grand Negus to pass an equality amendment to the Bill of Opportunities, which would allow females to wear clothes in public and earn profit just like males. Ishka had explained to him that over half the population was female, yet they contributed practically nothing to their economy, and that by allowing them to enter the financial world, the profits and prosperity of the Alliance could only increase. And while this argument was enough to persuade the Grand Negus. This radical notion sent Ferenginar into an uproar, even leading Zek to be deposed by the Ferengi Commerce Authority. However, Ishka worked with her son Quark to ensure Zek was reinstated, allowing them to continue making more progressive reforms, establishing the Congress of Economic Advisors, and collecting taxes to fund social programs like wage subsidies for the poor, retirement benefits for the elderly, and health care for all. In 2375, Grand Negus Zek was at last ready to retire with Ishka and so Rom, younger brother of Quark, was chosen to succeed as the new Grand Nagus. For a time
time, Quark believed that he was going to be chosen as the successor, but was outraged to hear of the reforms being passed. And so he immediately declared his intention to reverse these progressive changes at the first opportunity, remarking that he must act before everything Ferenginar stood for was destroyed. Quark even unknowingly invoked the words of Captain Jean-Luc Picard to say that the line has to be drawn here, this far, and no further. Yet Quark was ultimately passed over precisely because he represented the greedy, cutthroat traditions of the past, whereas his brother Rom was gentle and kind, more concerned with people than profit, and would therefore ensure the progressive changes reforming their society continued into the next generation. Love Star Trek? Then why not check out Loot Crate and their special mission crate with exclusive Star Trek collectibles, apparel, and gear delivered right to your door every month. If interested, be sure to click on the link in the description box below. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Barristan, the soft bastard Beesbury, Noble and Apprentice Maester, Glegnis, son of Vorin, Knight of the X, Jordan Stark, and Simon Toyne, Mystery Knight and Rabble Rouser. If you would like to help Civilization X, click on the Patreon link, and please be sure to like and subscribe, and click on the links to see more.